kiddos. Let's continue with thermodynamics. And we said we were going to practice some um, Gibbs free energy problems using this equation. Delta G of a reaction is equal to delta H of a reaction minus the product of T delta S of a reaction. Remember, we have to use this when we're unsure if a reaction is spontaneous. Remember, um, when delta H is negative, and delta S is positive. Aren't those both going in a direction that nature prefers? Yeah. So we say that these reactions are always spontaneous. And spontaneous reactions have a negative delta G. Now, what if the opposite occurs? What if delta H is positive, right? So it's an endothermic reaction. And delta S is negative. That means we're going to less disorder. Now, that's where kids get confused sometimes. Less disorder really means more order. And nature does not prefer that. It does not prefer a negative delta S. So these reactions are never, ever, ever spontaneous. So therefore, the delta G of that reaction would be positive. And you can look at the math and see how that would always work. Now, we use this Gibbs equation, this Gibbs free energy equation, when the signs of delta H and delta S are the same. When they are the same, we have to see what role temperature plays in the spontaneity of a reaction. So, this example here, when delta H is negative, it's exothermic. Nature does like that. And delta S is negative. That means it's becoming less disordered. Nature doesn't like that. That means it's spontaneous sometimes. And it turns out it's spontaneous at low temperatures. So delta G could be negative or it could be positive. We have to use the Gibbs, the, the Gibbs free energy equation to determine that. And that's this equation right here, folks. Remember? All right. And the last scenario is when delta H is positive. So that's endothermic. That's going in a direction um, against nature, so to speak. But delta S is positive. That's going in a direction that nature prefers. It's becoming more disordered. We're making lots of gases from liquids and solids. So nature prefers that. These reactions will be spontaneous, but only at higher temperatures. So delta G could be negative or positive, depending upon the temperature. So let's take a look at these examples up here. Are there any of these examples where we know for a surety the sign of delta G? Let's take a look at letter A. Delta H is negative. Huh. Nature prefers that, doesn't it? And delta S is positive. Nature prefers that. So we know that delta G in this particular situation will be negative, and that reaction is going to be spontaneous regardless of what the temperature is. And we'll do the math for that in just a minute. Let's take a look at the next one. Um, Delta H is negative. Nature likes that. Huh. Delta S is negative. Yeah, nature does not like to go to a lower degree of disorder. So delta G in this situation, we're going to have to calculate. We're going to have to figure it out to find out if it's positive or negative to determine the spontaneity of the reaction. Let's take a look at letter C. Delta H is positive. All right. Nature doesn't like that. Delta S is negative. Oh, nature doesn't like that. Yeah, this reaction, there's no way it's going to be spontaneous. So we know delta G is going to be positive. We just don't know the magnitude until we plug it into our equation. And let's take a look at the last example. Delta H is positive. Nature does not like that. Delta S is positive. Nature does like that because it's becoming more disordered. So delta G in this reaction is another question mark. We don't know if the sign will be positive or negative until we do the math. All right, so let's go ahead and start with letter A. Let's change colors here so it might be a bit easier to see. And let's plug it in. So we have delta H, which is negative 75.9 kilojoules, and that's actually kilojoules per mole, minus the product of temperature. Now, my temperature is in Kelvin, so that's nice. Um, because if it's not, if it were in Celsius, we'd have to add 273. But I've given you the Kelvin temperature here. And we're going to multiply that by delta S of the reaction, which is 138 joules. Now, remember, 
for some reason, delta S is often given in joules. We need to have it in the same unit as delta H, which is kilojoules. So that's actually 0.138 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Okay? So don't forget that. A lot of kids do, and it presents a few problems. So 0.138 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And my temperature was Kelvin. All right, so let's plug this in. Remember, we're using our parentheses uh, button a lot on our, our calculators here. So we have negative 75.9, and we're going to go ahead and subtract out. We're going to use our parentheses, 273 times 0.138. We'll close off our parentheses, and I get a negative 114 kilojoules per mole. Hey, we knew that it was going to be negative, didn't we? Yeah, we predicted that before we even did the problem. This reaction is going to be spontaneous. Okay, let's try the, no the next one. Now, we don't know the delta G of this one before we do the reaction. We have to, or before we do the math, do we? Because the sine of delta H is negative and the sine of delta S is negative. And whenever they're the same, we're unsure of the spontaneity until we do the math. So let's plug it in. We have negative 27.6 kilojoules per mole minus my temperature, which is 535 Kelvin this time, times delta S. Remember, this is in joules, so that's 0.0552. It's actually a negative 0.0552 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. So negative 0.0552 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. All right, let's see what we get here. So we have negative 27.6 minus... These are parentheses key, 535 times negative 0 0.0552. Close off our parentheses, and I get 1.93. Uh, That's a positive number, um, kilojoules per mole. So this reaction is non-spontaneous. Let's, let's fix this here. Remember, how do I know it's non-spontaneous? Because delta G is positive. We have to continually add energy, positive sign, for that reaction to go forward. Alrighty? Why don't you try C and D on your own? So pause the video, give them a whirl. By the way, you know your answer to C will end up being a positive number, but do the maths, find out what the magnitude is, then come back to the video, and we'll see how you did. Alright, welcome back. Let's try letter C together. We have 365 kilojoules per mole minus 388 Kelvin times, remember this is 0 0.0552, and that's a negative uh, kilojoules per mole K. So negative 0 0.0552 kilojoules per mole K. Let's see what we get. 365 minus parentheses. 388 times a negative 0 0.0552, and we end up with positive 386 kilojoules per mole. So this reaction is also non-spontaneous. How do we know it's non-spontaneous? Whoops. How do we know? <laughs> Sorry about that, kiddos. How do we know it's non-spontaneous? Because my sine of delta G is a positive sign. I have to add energy for it to continue. All right, and the last one, let's do that together. We have delta H, which is 452 kilojoules per mole, minus my Kelvin temperature, which is 165 Kelvin, times my delta S of the reaction, which is a positive 0 0.0557 kilojoules, mole K here. So positive 0 0.0557 kilojoules per mole K. Now we don't know what this is going to be because the sine of delta H and delta S are the same, so they're sort of competing against each other. So let's do the math here. 452 minus parentheses 165 times 0 0.0557. We'll close off our parentheses and I get positive. 
three kilojoules per mole, and then we have another non-spontaneous reaction. So if we, want, if we want this reaction to proceed, we have to add energy from an outside source to continue that reaction. Okay, kiddos? All right. Now just remember this table here, folks. If delta H and delta S, uh, if delta H is negative and delta S is positive, nature prefers that. Those are always spontaneous, and so delta G will be negative. If delta H is positive, endothermic, and delta S is negative, less disorder, which means more order. Nature doesn't like that. That's never spontaneous, and so delta G is positive. But when their signs are the same, either negative, negative, or positive, positive, we need to use the Gibbs uh, free energy equation to calculate um, the value of delta G to determine whether we need to add energy or if energy is being given off. If we have to add it, it's non-spontaneous. And if it's negative, it's being released, it is spontaneous. Okay? Hopefully that helps, kiddos. See you soon. Bye-bye.